Hey guys, this is Steve Huff from stevehuffphoto.com and I am here today with a couple of cool things I want to show you guys. Uh, as you, as those of you who've been to my site recently, you will see that I reviewed the Nikkor Nikon uh, 32F 1.2 lens for the Nikon 1 system, namely on my V1 that I have pimped out here. As you can see, this is a Nikon V1. And I have, in this video, I'm gonna show you the three best lenses for your Nikon One system camera. Whether you have a V1, a V2, a J1, J2, J3, or possibly the upcoming V3, which no one has because it hasn't even been announced yet. But these are the three best lenses for the system, and they just recently all came out, except for the 18.518, which came out uh, quite a few months ago. So, if you have a Nikon One camera, I am going to go over the best lenses for the system. 32 f 1.2 lens, which will give you, on the Nikon One system camera, we'll say the V1 just for example's sake, you will get a 1.2 aperture, uh, and since this is a 32 millimeter lens, on the Nikon One system with its 2.7 crop, you are going to be at around an 85, 86 millimeter uh, equivalent. So what this lens will do for you is give you a great portrait length lens, lens and a really fast aperture at 1.2. Now, are you gonna get the same depth of field as an 85 1.4 or 1.2? No, because this is not an 85 millimeter lens. This is a 32 millimeter lens f12 so the depth of field you're going to get out of this lens is that of a 32 f12 cropped to the size of the v2 sensor v1 sensor so this lens right here is not cheap it is 896 dollars and if you read my review of it then you will know what it can do if you didn't read my review of it re <laughs> review of this lens excuse me i suggest you go to stephafoto.com you click on the review tab, you go to mirrorless central under Nikon, and you will find where the review is linked to. This lens is an amazing lens. This is the best lens for the Nikon One system camera. I used it on the V1. Uh, you will get shallow depth of field, and you don't even have to be up close to your subject. But again, you're going to get the depth of field of a 32 millimeter lens, not of an 85 while you get the field of view of an 85 millimeter lens. But the build is a little hefty. It's made out of metal. It's very solid, very well made, has the nano coatings for contrast and color. Um, it also has the silent wave motor for silent focusing. It's re remarkably flare free. As you can see there, it says nano crystal coatings. 45, uh, 0.45 meters is the minimum focus distance which equals one and a half feet. So you can get as close as one and a half feet with this lens. Um, I found it to be an amazing lens for the One System. If you are invested in the One System and you want a super high quality lens that will give you shallow depth of field, this is the guy to go for. Uh, the quality level of this lens is a notch or two above the other primes, um, uh, the other prime, the 18.5 that I'm about to show you. This is about four times the weight and heft even though it's not four times the size. So the next lens that is a must-own lens for the Nikon One system is right here. This is the 18.5 F1.8. It's very light, it feels hollow, it feels cheap, it feels like it's made out of plastic. But this is actually a metal barrel and the lens is indeed made out of glass. Uh, and this is a very, very sharp lens, even when shooting wide open at 1.2. The same goes for the 3212. When you're shooting wide open at 1.2, it is very sharp. Uh, that's one thing about the Nikon One system. You're going to get very sharp images, uh, great color. Uh, the downsides of the One system to date with the current crop of cameras is the high ISO has some grain to it, and you even have a little bit of grain at base ISO. But what I have found is that this gives the files a film-like grain and rendering. To me, there's no other digital camera out there that will put out, right out of camera, anything that resembles film. Now, this doesn't really either, but it comes the closest to what I've seen from digital. The Nikon V1 and its 10 megapixel one inch sensor can give you very filmic images. 
Uh, what you see on this V1 is a grip made by Photo Deox. You can get them on Amazon. It's a metal grip for the V1 and you have access still to your battery and your memory card. So that's why I like this grip and it adds the little grip on the front. Now I have the white V1 here. I also own a black one but it actually doesn't look too bad with the black accessories on the white camera because Nikon kept the back of the camera black. The lens you see on this is not really a recommended lens. It's a, a C-mount lens, an old CCTV lens. It's very soft, very funky. It's one of those toy lenses, but I got an adapter for the V1. So I'm going to go ahead and plop the 3212 on to show you what that lens looks like on the V1 body. Here is the 3212 on the V1. Um, it's not huge. It's actually very compact. This is still much smaller than any APS-C equivalent or full frame equivalent um, for a fast lens like that, a 1.2 aperture lens. You're going to have that light gathering of 1.2, again the depth of field of a 32 millimeter, not an 85, which is the focal length equivalent. So it's a little confusing, but what it means is this is going to be a good, good lens for low light. You're going to get some reach out of it and you can shoot wide open at 1.2 without feeling like you're going to get soft results. Uh, the focus is very fast. As a matter of fact, it's one of the fastest focusing lens on the One system. It focuses pretty instantaneously, even in low light. So I really like that lens. Again, as you can see, the tiny 18.5, it's a tiny lens. So you can see it's not that much bigger. So I'm going to go ahead. You can see that lens on there like so. I'm going to go ahead and put on the 18.5 so you can get a look at that one. Okay, so there's the V1 with the 18.5. Uh, yes, this is the silver lens. I kind of like the silver lenses. Um, and again, it's pretty small. And again, next to it is the 32. So when it's on the camera, it stays compact and small. This is about the size. Uh, it's not like a, a small pocket camera. It's a little bit smaller than a Sony RX1. It's a lot smaller than a Leica M9. So that is the Nikon one with the 18.5. The second lens that I highly recommend for the Nikon one system. If you get any lens, uh, because I know that 3212 is pricey and priced out of a lot of people's price range, the 18.518 makes for a great 50 millimeter equivalent. Um, and it's only $196. It's under $200 and you can focus super close with it. So it's almost, almost macro-ish in a way, not quite, but you can get very close with the 18.5. But again, you're gonna get a 50 millimeter equivalent field of view, but you're gonna get the depth of field of an 18 and a half millimeter lens at 1.8. So think of it like that. You still can get some shallow depth of field with this lens. The closer you focus, the more shallow depth of field you'll get. There's one more lens I wanna talk about that I have not yet reviewed, and I just got it, but the first test snaps look very, very good. So uh, with the lens I'm talking about here is the new Nikon 6.7 to 13 millimeter. This will give you an equivalent of an 18 to 35 in a little zoom lens. Now this is very well made. It's uh, better made than the first zooms, the 10 to 30 and 30 to 110. It feels a little professional in the build and the feel. It's very smooth. It has VR built in, which is kind of weird to have VR built into a wide angle lens, but I instantly noticed where that came in handy and that was when shooting video. You put this on at the wide angle of uh, 6.7, which again is an 18, uh, and your video is silky smooth, almost steady camish due to the VR in the lens. So this is also in a spherical lens and it's sharp corner to corner, which is one of the pros of the Nikon One system and the one inch sensor. All your lenses are going to be very sharp. So this lens comes in at under $500. If you want an ultra wide, it comes with the hood. Uh, the 50, the 18, the 550 equivalent is under $200. And the granddaddy, the uh, portrait lens, the fast prime that we all crave the 3212 comes in at $896. That's a little expensive, but for me, if you're shooting the one system like I am, and I, I have two bodies, I shoot it all the time, I kind of 
w once I reviewed the 3212, I bought it because I liked it so much. Uh, it's the only lens in the one mount that will give you that kind of depth of field, the shallow depth of field, and the sharpness and the portrait focal length. It blows away the zoom, so the zooms cannot touch this lens. So there you go, my top three recommended lenses for that Nikon One system. You got the uh, 6.7 to 13 zoom, which I just did some early test shots. Sharp corner to corner, very high contrast, super punchy color, very, very sharp lens. And if you like ultra wide shooting, that's the guy. If you're not into ultra wide shooting, uh, the 10 millimeter prime, which I have in white, the 10 to eight is a fantastic lens as well. So this comes in at around $250. Um, so then the 50, the, the 18.518, highly recommended. Everybody should own that lens at under 200 bucks if you have a Nikon one. Ultra wide zoom and the 3212. Those are the three best quality lenses I have come across on the Nikon one system and I've tried them all. So there you go, this is Steve Huff for stevehuffphoto.com and that was a quick look at the Nikon one system, my three highest recommended lenses with number four being the 10 miller, 10 millimeter 2.8. So if you like this video, if you found it useful, you can give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I always have new videos coming to this channel. And be sure to always go to stevehuffphoto.com for the full written reviews with loads and loads of pictures. I have a new dedicated image sample gallery for the Nikon One system uh, in on my website under the About Me tab, so check it out. So thanks for watching, hope everybody has a great day, bye.